Well, happy last day of 2020 to all of you out there in this great big world. Yes, this is your brother Dana coming to you again from the city of Chicago. Shalom to all of the precious chosen people of the Most High Yah, the family member that I am cleaving to um, with all my might. And uh, I just really pray that the Most High Yah will wrap his arms of love around you in this season of transition and transitioning to where you take in your rightful place as the head. Um, I have only a few white evangelical family members or as the Most High Yah instructed for me to refer them to is also the Church of Sardis. Few of them that have not yet totally blocked me off of Facebook or social media. And so I've been looking at some of their posts and they've been talking about um, we need to go to Washington, D.C. because Trump told us to. That's literally the words from one of the individuals. Trump told us to because we have to fight for our freedom. And so I saw here um, at the Washington Post that it says January 6th protests multiply as Trump continues to call supporters <laughs> because Trump told us to to Washington. Um, and, it, and it says four seemingly competing rallies to demand, see, to demand, hold on to that word, to demand that Congress overturn the results of the presidential election. Why? Because it is viewed, um, it's illegitimate. And it's illegitimate because of what they'll say, the fraud, the lawlessness, the disorder of everything, um, the injustices, the unfairnesses, you know, all of these things are now being thrown out by my white evangelical family members as the reason to why they lost this election. So I want to ask you this, my white evangelical family members. Where was the law when you stepped your forefathers and, and the spirit and the behavior to this very day? Where is your law when it came to your forefathers coming unto this land and slaughtering, aborting, murdering, terrorizing the millions and millions of Native American Indians that lived here? before your forefathers came. Where was the law then when it came to the fairness, when it came to what was right when your forefathers decided to take this land? Where was the law when you brought in our African brothers and sisters at the time and turned them into slaves that you murdered, that you raped, that you aborted even though you're pro-life, slaughtered? executed? Where was the law when your forefathers and even today when you see our police officers or even other white civilians given the right to lawlessly take the life of one of our black family members? Where was the order when you came, our forefathers, to take this land and to enslave our black brothers and sisters where was your order then? Where, where was your justice when you came, your forefathers, into this land and slaughtered and aborted and, and raped and murdered and terrorized the Native American Indians, taken majority of almost all of them that lived here? Where was your justice for our black brothers and sisters that you brought here as slaves? Where was your justice then? And where is your justice now? <laughs> and so now you are demanding order and, and the law and justice so that you can maintain your freedom? So, you know, I did this thing too. I looked up fraud. And I thought, what is the opposite words of fraud? Where was your truthfulness? That's the opposite of fraud. Where was your forthrightness? 
That's the opposite of fraud. Where was your decency? That's the opposite of fraud. And where was your wholesomeness? Which is the opposite of fraud. And where was your honor as a believer of God that followed the Bible? When your forefathers stepped foot onto this land and slaughtered and raped and aborted and murdered, terrorized and destroyed our Native American Indian family members. Where was your honor? Where was your decency when you enslaved our black brothers and sisters? And to this day, you continue to look at them as less than. And now you believe that you're going to march to Washington, D.C. and command a God to give to you what you've never given to others outside of the skin color of your own. See, Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 and 8 says this. Don't be deceived. See, my white evangelical family members, don't you be deceived. God will not be mocked. He will not be laughed at. He will not be laughed at. Which means he will not overlook things that must deal with justice. And your forefathers and the blood of this nation of racism and of white superiority and the way that you obtained your freedom in this land must be held accountable. And since God has been patient for 400 years, it's now and it is this generation that will be held accountable for the sins of their forefathers. Because just look at this. If our black brothers and sisters have been in slavery for 400 years because that was the consequences of their ancestors' disobedience to the living God, then guess what? Your consequences are now going to hit for your disobedience to the living God. And that disobedience is your idolatry. That you have created the God of white superiority in the religion of Christianity. And that's why you don't feel it necessary to repent of your sins that of our forefathers because you feel like you are justified. Well, if God gave you this land, then you could sit back and stand with assurance to know that there's no fraud, there's no lawlessness, there's no Democrats, there's no nobody that can take from you what God has given you if you really believe that God gave you this land. But see, when you know how you took this land and when you know in your heart how you and your forefathers have lived out their life in this land, you're afraid of losing this land the same way you obtained it. You're afraid of losing your freedom the same way you took your freedom. Why? Who, whatever a man sows, he shall reap. Those who sow to please the flesh. See, right now your white superiority is all about your flesh. So you can walk in a higher altitude of arrogance to think that you're above people of color. Because look at the chosen people are white. And look at Jesus, the Son of God himself, is white. So from that flesh... Desiring white supremacy, your Bible says you will reap destruction. And that is exactly what you are entering into now. A season of your destruction according to the word of God in Galatians chapter 6. But the one who sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. And then this is a huge verse. Revelations chapter 13 and 10. It says, He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. And he who kills with the sword or the gun must be killed with that sword or that gun. 
That is scripture, Revelations 13, 10. So I'm going to break this down to you, my white evangelical family members. There is no earthly king or your president. There is no rally. There is no army. There is not even your God of Christianity going to be able to stop the promises of the true God the Most High Yah, that declares even right here that what a man sows, he shall reap. You are now going to reap these consequences. Those who led into captivity will be taken into captivity. And those who have lived by the gun and the sword will now be taken by the gun and the sword. That's it. If you have an issue with what I'm saying, then you need to have an issue with your Bible. But I will go back to the fact that Trump held up your Bible, declaring it in front of a church that he would be your earthly, at least, savior that will restore the principles of your religion of white Christianity, which is the God and the lifestyle of white superiority. But see, you think you're above facing consequences because the people that you <laughs> disregard are people of color, and especially our black brothers and sisters. So you don't think that a white God is going to actually discipline white people for treating black people or brown people in your evil ways. Because you don't value them. Even though you say God loves all people. Of course he does. If you want to say that. But the problem isn't God's love. The problem is you. In your heart. So then if God loves all people. He's going to overlook you not loving them all. But see. My black brothers and sisters to you. Aren't really people. That's, that's the reality of it. They're really not people. And that's why in the depth of your heart. You excuse yourself from this because they're really not people. They're slaves. They're less than. So there's no rally, not even a presidential victory. There is no earthly man. There is no army. There is nobody that is going to protect you from the truth of God's word. If you brought into captivity, you will be taken. And if you live by that sword, that sword will take you. So this is the issue. Your freedom, white evangelical family members, will be taken from you the same way you took freedom from our Native American Indians, from our African American or the true chosen people of the true Most High Yah, my God, that I serve. So to you, the Church of Sardis, who have an ear to hear, I ask and I pray the my God, the Most High Yah, that he will help you hear so that the things of the book, the things of your Bible, the things that you submit everybody else under when it comes for, to truth over you, you will either embrace the consequences or you will repent, repay, and turn before they really hit your front door. So to him that has an ear, I pray that my God, the Most High Yah, the true living God, will have mercy on you. Shalom.